Hello, hi everybody, welcome back. Today I'll be talking about Gemma McCluskey. Gemma was a well-known British actress who appeared in the UK's most popular television show. And she was a household name known to millions. She had a promising career until it was all cut short. In March 2012, Gemma disappeared from her home in London. No one knew where she was, even her close friends, who all thought this was out of character for Gemma. A few days later, Gemma's dismembered body was found in a canal. Her brother Tony was found guilty of her murder in 2013. Gemma was born in East London in January 1983. East London was known in the past for crime, poverty and deprivation. We tend to get a lot of people with two or three generations living close to each other. Everyone sort of knew each other, you know, which is lovely because you kind of had different generations of your family just living around the corner from you so you could pop in have a chat have a cup of tea or coffee you know but however that part of london has now changed and has become quite trendy and very sought after with lots of trendy bars pubs and restaurants Gemma by all, all accounts, was a friendly, bubbly girl. She was liked by everyone. Even after her parents' separation, Gemma's fun and infectious personality was not affected. Her personality drove her to an acting career, and at 17, she landed a role in the biggest program on British television. This, for anyone's standard, was an amazing scope and demonstrated just how charismatic Gemma was. Gemma lived at home with her mother and brother. By all accounts, she loved living at home with her mother and enjoyed being at home, taking care of her mother, who at some point was diagnosed with a brain tumour. The cruel turn of event meant her mother had to be hospitalized due to contracting an infection. This situation, although devastating for Gemma, she threw herself into visiting her mother daily and supporting her as best as she could. So, to family members and friends, it was a huge red flag when suddenly Emma missed her regular daily visit to her mother. She was reported missing. Then police now saw this as a little bit unusual for Gemma not to have been seen and on top of that, not visiting her mother like she normally did. So they scaled up their search when it became apparent that this was not a regular missing persons case. It became obvious that something terrible may have happened to Gemma. Missing posters were circulated by some of her famous actor friends, her family members, all throughout social media. It would have been difficult for Gemma to just disappear because don't forget she was a well-known face to millions and millions of people. She was easily recognizable. A few days after Gemma's disappearance, so police continued with the search for Gemma. People were brought in to be questioned and one of them was Tony, the brother that lived with her as he had been the last person to see her. He told the police that he saw her leave, but she never told him where she was going and when she would be returning. 
And since that time, he had seen her. Gemma has made no contact with him or anyone else for that matter. So, on the day of the murder, it emerged that Gemma and Tony had had their usual fight. This was what Gemma's friend had told the police when they questioned them. So, their, their fights were usually quite common. They fought a lot because Gemma did not like the fact that her brother was just sitting at home, drinking, smoking, not getting a job, being a nuisance, and just not being very productive or kind to her. They just did not get on and argued constantly with each other. He hated that she was successful and had appeared in Britain's most famous television show while he was a drifter with no job who spent most of his day sitting on the lounge and smoking and drinking. He had said that him and Gemma's fight was because she had discovered that he left the baths upstairs running. So Tony claimed that when she confronted him, he grabbed her by the wrists and punched her to the floor. Then he claimed that after that, he had no further recollection of what happened after. Gemma's headless body was found six days after the search for her had started. Her body was found in a suitcase floating in the river. The body was immediately identified as Gemma due to the distinct tattoo on the back, which matched the one that Gemma had. This was devastating news for her family and friends who had high hopes that Gemma would eventually walk through the door alive and well. They had hoped that maybe, just maybe, she had taken some well-deserved break and would just appear refreshed and ready to continue. Unfortunately, it was, this was far from the case. The worst part of it was Gemma had been murdered in a horrific way. During examination of the body, it emerged that there were nearly a hundred hacks marks on her body, on her torso. Shocking. This was obviously a very angry individual who hated, despised Gemma. That they would take the time and energy to hack at the body with such anger and hatred. It all seemed too personal. The autopsy reports showed that her death was caused by several blows to the head with blunt force instrument. So Tony had spent hours chopping up his sister's body. He then went as far as to distribute them in different locations so to avoid detection. It came out later that there had been signs of domestic abuse continuous by Tony towards his sister. Tony was found guilty of murder and sentenced to a minimum of 20 years in prison. Can you imagine being killed by your own brother? And not just that, he had the heart to dismember his own sister. Unbelievable story. That's where we ended today. Thank you everybody for joining me for this one. I hope you can join me for the next one. Please like, share and subscribe. I'll see you for the next one.